in the beginning was darkness. And in that darkness, if you, if you imagine that darkness, uh, in that moment when that darkness became aware of itself, it manifested or became like a dot, which in itself contained the light. It's clear that when you want to talk about these things, you need to talk about it in metaphors and symbolisms and stuff like that. There's really no words for this. But this is a, um, a, a thing that is going on. It's not something that happened billions of years ago. It's still going on. We are still in the middle of creation. And that's why it's important to, to give it a few thoughts, you know, because we, we, we want to know where we come from, where we belong, what we are doing here and where we are going. So, of course, it's, it's important to know where do we come from. In that light, in that moment when it became aware of its ability to expand, it was what people today call the Big Bang. But of course that is, you know, a very, very poor expression for what, what really happened. In that moment, everything on a spiritual plane came into being. And you should imagine at that exact moment, all the angel energies, what we call angel energies, were uh, created and became uh, a reality. And everything was given, not because of the first course had any, uh, it, uh, any thought about, uh, I want to, to give all my creations uh, these and that uh, qualities. No, no, no. It was the free will that everything was given was part of God. And everything is, is um, created in the image of God, or the first cause, or whatever you want to call it. So imagine that the four, what we call the four archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael, was, they expanded out from this center at that exact moment. And uh, they, of course, uh, have integrated in them all the qualities, different qualities, that are still a, a reality today in the, the lives of human beings. But this, of course, was long before everything came into creation. Later, when everything manifested on a physical level, because you should imagine all the angel energies, was man they, they, were, they were created into a spiritual uh, reality that is still there, and uh, it was therefore that some of them um, didn't know how to handle the free will of to do the right thing in, at the right moment because that's what had been going on ever since and that is our, uh, um, what do you call it, this is something that humans also have to deal with, you know, and find out how to balance and, and make the right decision at the right moment. When do we pass by and when do we offer our help? That's the question. So to find the balance in, in, in doing the right thing at the right moment. It doesn't mean that we, we don't talk about good or evil because what we call good and evil is more or less uh, just something that is sprung out from our limited view of everything. We have to to, uh, to measure everything, is that good or is it bad or, or so forth. So it is really a limiting uh, way of looking at everything. But imagine that there is uh, different things that, that is part of, what we call good and evil is part of everything. But it's not, evil is not evil in that respect and good is not good in that respect. They are just natural parts of plus and minus and sometimes we, we need more of the, the other then, and you know, and f so forth. It goes up and down. But the question is, are we able to judge when are we going to say yes and when are we going to say no? When are we going down that road? When are we going down that road? So, much later when humans were, were manifested on the earth plane as physical beings, we can read that uh, there was a man called Enoch 
who um, was taken by the four archangels uh, back to before everything was created, before time and space. And he was shown how everything was done, you know. And at one point, uh, some of the angels, they uh, went to the, what we call the, res the reservoir of, uh, of souls, and they brought one soul up and put it in front of the first cause, or God. And Enoch, he, he asked uh, one of the archangels, who is this? And he gets the answer, this is the elect one, this is the chosen one. This is the first soul. This is the soul that we actually call the Son of Man, because he's going to be the first one to manifest on the on uh, the earth level. So um, that was the way that Adam uh, was. Uh, he was shown that this is Adam, and in fact, it was uh, the first incarnation of Enoch. That was Adam, which later became the master soul, the first soul, Yeshua, or what we know as Jesus in the church. But why are all this important? This is important because we have to try to understand that we are interconnected with all those different energies, like angel energies. And first of all, the four main ones that we, we, we need to know about is Michael, Uriel, Gabriel, and Raphael. And we should also understand that these are like huge, huge waves of energy that is everywhere. They penetrate humans and they are all around us also. Um, on a conscious level, on a, on a spiritual level, they penetrate everything. So. Um, in order for us to know what we really are doing here and also to solve all the problems that we have here on Earth, we really need to connect to these energies on a conscious level because we are connected to them whatever we are conscious about it or not. But the minute that you, you get conscious about it and you, get, you are aware of your connection to these beings, light beings and energies, it it, 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 it differs completely from, from uh, what you have ever discovered before or how you, you, um, how you experience uh, your way of life and stuff like that. There's a story I want to share with you because in, this is, goes, I think, uh, eight, nine years back, I was, on, uh, I was driving in my car from, uh, from France to Denmark and I had had a, a very busy season with a lot of groups and a lot of uh, clients and stuff like that. I was also being, uh, I was busy writing books and stuff. So um, when I was driving, um, I suddenly wake up after I have uh, hit in the, the middle of the road, you know, and the car had, had turned around sideways and front ways out through some, some, um, some, some gates and five meters down from the highway, completely, the car completely destroyed, completely shattered. While all this was happening, um, I, I experienced that I was flying through a white tunnel with enormous speed. And while I was doing that, my body was left behind in the car. Uh, trying to survive in its own um, uh, kind of struggle there. And I remember the, 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 the moment that I get, got back to, to the body was through the, the, the crown center and it was, it was uh, accompanied by a sound like when you cork uh, a bottle. And then dook, I was back. And uh, when I opened my eyes, and came back, uh, slowly came back to my body, I realized that this was, there was a peaceful, I was in a peaceful environment. Uh, and I really thought, my first thought was, wow, is this really it? Does it stop here? Is, am I dead? And I looked uh, 50 meters from, from me, my car was completely, you know. And then I, I lifted my head and in front of me, I saw this beautiful young 
woman standing with a, a, a cross, equal sided cross on her chest, smiling, and she said to me, Lars, when you can, um, when you can survive this, you can survive anything. And don't worry, everything is taken care of. Just take it easy. <laughs> and, uh, and then I w was aware of a, a man sitting on my uh, right side, a German man, and he was very worried. And he told me that he had helped me out of the car. Oh, no, no, I have, I've, my, me myself have, have, was uh, standing out of my car and have uh, I just collapsed uh, two, three meters from it, outside it. And he had helped me 50 meters away because, uh, away because he was uh, afraid that it was going to explode. But um, at no point do I remember that there was any connection between him and a young girl in front of me. And the last thing I saw when uh, I was taken away by the rescuers through the back window of the car was this young woman standing, waving me, comforting, and um, that was my guardian angel. And this is something I have been, have, uh, been uh, uh, confirmed later. Uh, and since that incident, I have been very conscious about her being very close all the time. And I'm telling this, I'm sharing this because this is a reality for all human beings. All, every, each of us has our own uh, private guardian angel just close to us all the time, from birth to when we are leaving. And also after we, we have left this plane, they are there to help us going further on. But of course, when I look back retrospectively, I can see that she has been there all the time and she has been my muse and she has been, you know, in my dreams and stuff like that. And I have written about her in my books also, without really knowing who, who she was, you know. So I thought she was kind of like the Jungian, uh, what Jung is talking about, my anima. And maybe she also is my anima on one level. One thing I'm certain of is she is my guardian angel as, and she's real there, she's live, you know. And the only, that's the only uh, time I remember that she manifested in a physical uh, body and was uh, visible, uh, and that was for me anyway. But uh, now there's no doubt in my mind that she's there. I can feel her and I can talk to her and I can, I, when I pray and meditate, I talk to her all the time. And also I'm so grateful and full of gratitude. And I try to express my gratitude every day uh, that she's there. And also that uh, now I am aware that these entities and light beings are everywhere. And they are protecting us and they are helping us in any way. And, uh, when uh, an energy form like that manifests as a human being doesn't mean that we shouldn't experience it, or think of it as a human being or as a... It is an energy that can penetrate anything. It's so fast that it can travel at speeds that we even can't measure, you know. So, but if there was ever was an, an, an understanding of the expression the speed of light, if that has any meaning to, to anybody, we could take it and, and say, they move with the speed of light, and even faster than the speed of light. So, the importance for us to know that we need to reconnect to these uh, entities and these entities are what I really wanted to share with you, because uh, or else we, 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 will, um, we will lose track of what we really are here for and we will also maybe not get to the point where we understand, ah, this is what I'm here for. Now I know, now I know what direction I go. But of course everything is a kind of, we are here to learn to, to, to keep the balance and the balance of 
all the time be aware of where to go and what to do to, and be completely in alignment with those energies. That is our real work. And it, of course, this is something that, not something you can go and learn on a, in a workshop, on a course, or by reading a book. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't read books about it, because that's, you need, we need to study. Exactly as the, the, Dalai, Lama, Dalai, Lama, uh, the Dalai Lama says, it's really important that we study also. Just don't meditate only. We have to meditate, we have to study, and we have to, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, try to take everything we learn from the spirits into the earth plane, into our everyday life. We must unfold it through our being and through everything we do say and do and so forth. So, in, when everything was created, it was in that exact moment, that was the moment when the law of light manifested itself. Because the law of light is really, it's not, you know, rigid rules as such, but it is a conscious um, knowing of everything's holiness in an, in this exact moment and in, in in this exact moment and in this exact moment. This is something that goes on and on and on. But we human beings limits it with our way of of always thinking what is good, what is bad, this is not good, this is not bad. The, you know, as I said before, this is something that must be a natural part of your whole um, your whole being as when you are when you are incarnated here. You the more natural it becomes for you to dance with the energies, because that this is what I'm talking about, to dance with the entities. My own teacher, the seer, which I, who I have uh, I wrote about in my book, The Old Manuscript, he was talking about that all the time, to be elegant, to be present in an elegant way, to be here now. And I know that there's a lot of talk about the now, but we should remember there is an eternal now that has been there all the time. It's only because we humans, we, um, we mess it up with our measuring everything. And of course that's a natural part of being a human being, because without it we didn't know in f how to start. But when we are out of uh, kindergarten, I mean, we should rise up and start using all the, the qualities and abilities that we, we, we were born with. But of course it, it, it takes a lot of insight that we know that we are not only intellectuals, because intellectual knowledge is good, but it is limited. And we think that we can measure everything and if we can't understand it, it doesn't exist. Because I can't see it, it doesn't exist. And of course that is rubbish, you know. Remember that uh, when they asked uh, Luther, uh, his opinion about the ongoing discussion was, the, the, is the earth round or is it flat? He said, come on, or any fool can see that the, 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 the earth is flat. So you see, that was some, one of the, and all the, the, the smartest uh, scientists and theologians at that time, they said, hmm, any fool can see that the earth is flat. It turned out otherwise. And it's a challenge to us today not to, to stop at any and make any conclusions before we have experienced everything. And that is why we're here. We're here to experience everything. And if we cannot experience everything in one lifetime, we must come back. And that goes on and goes on and on and on. And most people that have been here f 
so many times we can't even keep track of it. And a lot of people also, of course, of course come from other uh, systems, other universes. Because remember what Yeshua said, my father's kingdom has many mansions. There are so many uh, places we can incarnate, not as humans, but as other kind of beings. Not uh, maybe manifesting as f uh, physical beings, but there are so many conscious spiritual levels to, to incarnate, to, to come again on, to incarnate. But um, we must always go back to the Creator, to the first course, and present everything we have experienced before we go out again. And we must also, at that time, at that moment, really understand what we have been doing and why we did it and so forth. And of course when we leave the, the physical plane that will be much easier than we see everything in a much clearer light. And But the job is, while we are here, to reconnect in order to unfold everything that we need to unfold. I have, what I have done is I have uh, uh, written this book, The Law of Light, and uh, it is not rules some, as such, but it's, it's uh, telling you about one of the holy languages, the Aramaic language which Yeshua spoke, um, because we also have to understand that what we are talking about here there isn't really any language for it. So all the mystics, what they are trying to do is trying to, to find some, some way of expressing what they have experienced. That is really the mystics, the work of a mystic. So if you haven't really, all those teachers and stuff that, that come around and, and talk about things they haven't experienced themselves, you know, that's, that's really problematic, you know. So we can only talk, what we cannot talk of, of things that we don't know. We cannot talk about things we haven't experienced ourselves. So that's really important also when we need and look for inspiration. Go to people that have experienced these things have had and have found a language in which they can express it. So ordinary people can understand it. And by ordinary, I mean everybody, that every human being can understand what we're talking about. And that is the challenge for all mystics, also for me, of course. Yeah, I think that was about it for now. So um, remember, metaphors, symbols, dreams, everything that that is in that department is part of the language of the future. And if you think it's something new, uh, unfortunately it isn't, but we can be lucky that it's still here, around here, this wisdom, but it was thousands of years ago people knew about this. And in order for us not to forget it, it's really important that we repeat it and repeat it and give it on from one gener generation to the next. Thank you very much.